Mysterious pattern in a cave is oldest rock art found in Patagonia. About 8,200 years ago, in one of the last places settled by humans, prehistoric peoples began painting comb-like designs as the climate shifted. In the stark inland desert of Patagonia in Argentina, there is a remote cave decorated with nearly 900 paintings of human figures, animals and abstract designs. Until recently, archaeologists had assumed that the rock art at this site, known as Cueva Wainil 1, was created within the past few thousand years. But in a paper published Wednesday in the journal Science Advances, archaeologists say that one of the cave's most mysterious motifs, a comb-like pattern, first appeared some 8,200 years ago, making it by far the earliest known example of rock art in one of the last places on Earth to be settled by our species. Cave artists continued to draw the same comb design in black pigment for thousands of years, an era when other human activity was virtually absent at the site. The cave art provides a rare glimpse of a culture that may have relied on this design to communicate valuable insights across generations during a period of climactic shifts. We got the results and we were very surprised, said Guadalupe Romero Villanueva, an author of the study and an archaeologist at the Argentine government agency CONACYT and the National Institute of Anthropology and Latin American Thought in Buenos Aires. It was a shock and we had to rethink some things. Patagonia, which spans the southern tip of South America, was not reached by humans until about 12,000 years ago. These early inhabitants thrived at Cueva Wainil 1 for generations, leaving signs of habitation. Then, around 10,000 years ago, the area became more arid and hostile as a result of climatic shifts. The archaeological record in the cave likewise dried up for the next several thousand years, suggesting that the site was largely abandoned because of environmental pressures. The comb motifs overlap with this long period of hardship, according to Dr. Romero Villanueva and her colleagues, who identified the age of the paintings with radiocarbon dating. The team also found that the black paint was probably made with charred wood, perhaps from burned shrubs or cactuses. As interesting as the ages are, for us it's more significant that they span, more or less, 3,000 years of painting basically the same motif during all this time, said Ramiro Barbarena, an author of the study and an archaeologist also at Conocet in Argentina as well as the Temica Catholic University in Chile. He added that this was evidence for continuity in the transmission of information in these very small and very mobile societies. Though the meaning of the comb motif has been lost to time, the researchers speculate that it might have helped preserve the collective memories and oral traditions of peoples who endured this unusually hot and dry period. The relationships between groups of ancient humans that developed and shared such rock art may have enhanced the odds of survival in this challenging environment, drive. Barbarena said, Andres Troncoso, an archaeologist in the Department of Anthropology at the University of Chile who was not involved with the research, said he agreed with that interpretation. The paper, provides a contribution to the discussion about how humans have dealt with climatic change in the past, he said. Though the purpose of the comb motif is likely to remain a mystery, the motif's persistent presence in the cave opens a new window into Patagonia's prehistoric peoples. You cannot help but think about these people, drive, Romero Villanueva said, adding, they were at the same place, admiring the same landscape, the people living here, maybe families, were gathering here for social aspects. It's really emotional for us. Earliest directly dated rock art from Patagonia reveals socio-ecological resilience to mid-Holocene climate. Abstract. The timing for the evolution of the capacity to inscribe the landscape with rock art has global relevance. While this was an inbuilt capacity when Homo sapiens first colonized the Americas, the heterogeneous distribution of rock art shows that it was a facultative behavior arising under unknown socio-ecological conditions. Patagonia was the last region to be explored by humans. While its rock art is globally important, 
It remains largely undated by absolute methods. We report the earliest set of directly radiocarbon dated rock art motifs from the archaeological site Cueva Wainil 1, northwestern Patagonia, Argentina, starting at 8.2 thousand years before the present, Ka BP predating previous records by several millennia, and encompassing over 3 Ka, approximately 130 human generations. This mid Holocene, rock art emergence, Phase overlaps with extremely arid conditions and a human demographic stasis. We suggest that this diachronic rock art emerged as part of a resilient response to ecological stress by highly mobile and low-density populations. Introduction The debate on the origins of rock art across continents is linked to the evolutionary development of cognitive abilities, the emergence of symbolic behaviors, and the ensuing sociodemographic trajectories. Worldwide, archaeology seeks to establish the timing and spatial patterning of landscape inscription with images as a tool to understand its social, adaptive, and evolutionary roles. The simultaneous material and symbolic quality of these visual expressions makes them a unique indicator of landscape learning, social dynamics, information flow, and construction of territories by mobile groups at multiple scales. While recent interdisciplinary approaches make the robust dating of rock art increasingly feasible, the absolute temporal placing of motifs still hampers our understanding of the varying regional origins and roles of rock art. In South America, chronological analysis of rock art has largely relied on relative sequences based on iconographic analysis with few absolute dates on painted or engraved images. Patagonia constitutes the southernmost tip of the Americas and was the last continental region to be settled by dispersing modern humans during the late Pleistocene 14 to 16. Its unique biogeographic context coupled to an excellent preservation of paleoecological and archaeological evidence makes it a primary region to understand the peopling of the Americas and the role of symbolic marking of the landscape by means of rock art. With few exceptions, Nonetheless, Patagonian rock art remains only dated by relative methods or by absolute dates on contextually associated remains. As part of a regional project combining the study of paleoecological history, systematic landscape survey, and intensive dating of human occupations in stratified contexts, we present the earliest directly dated rock art from northern Patagonia, Nucan Province, Argentina. Four diagnostic motifs from the archaeological site Cueva Wainil 1, CH1, were archaeometrically characterized and securely dated by accelerator mass spectrometry AMS. Building on this case, we develop a multiscalar approach connecting successive analytical levels. At a local scale, we present a formal, compositional, contextual, and chronological study of diachronic human practices of place marking and transmission of information. At a macro-regional scale, we situate the evidence of early rock art production in northern Patagonia in the context of paleoecological trends since the late Pleistocene, combined with a radiocarbon-based approach to demographic trends in the South American drylands. By presenting solid site scale evidence on intergenerational transmission of knowledge situated in a macro regional socio ecological framework, our case study contributes to ongoing global discussions on the origins and social and adaptive roles of rock art. Results Picturing a place, CH1 Archaeological Site. CH1 is located at 1000 m above sea level in the inland deserts of northwestern Patagonia in Argentina. South America. This region lies at 36 degrees southeastward of the Andes within the South American Arid Diagonal, SOD, a major climatic and biogeographic region encompassing most of the drylands in South America. The Andes is a topographic barrier to the prevailing westerly storm tracks, affecting the patterns of atmospheric circulation and imposing a steep west-east gradient on precipitation and effective moisture. At 36 degrees south, annual precipitation varies from approximately 1100 m close to the current Argentina-Chile border to 200 to 150 mm in the core of the sod. 
Most of the precipitation, approximately 75%, falls during winter and is brought from the Pacific Ocean by the southern westerlies, while summer precipitation related to Atlantic moisture is negligible in this area. Vegetation distribution follows this gradient, from forest communities west of the Andes, Chile, and the Andean slopes in Argentina to the grass steppes of the eastern Patagonia province, characterized by a low shrubby steppe intermingled with tussock grasses. As altitude and precipitation decrease toward the eastern lowlands, the ecotone with the shrub steppes of the Monte province that characterize drylands at this latitude develops. CH1 covers a large habitation area of 630 square meters that is unparalleled at the macro-regional level. The cavity is formed by erosion at the contact between the ignimbrites of the Tilhawe Formation at the bottom, where the paintings were made, and basalts of El Puente Formation forming the roof of the cave. The excavations of CH1 resulted in the recovery of over 5,500 lithic artifacts and 8,800 bone specimens, principally flaked stone artifacts and guanaco bone assemblages with virtually no ceramics. CH1 has a long and well-dated chronostratigraphic sequence spanning 12,000 years, ka, showing discrete and discontinuous phases of site formation. A stable microenvironment with predominantly dry conditions within the cave has produced excellent preservation of organic materials including megafauna dung and macrobotanical remains. Moreover, CH1 provides a remarkable set of unusual portable art artifacts channeling visual communication, such as perforated shell beads, decorated guanaco bones, and pyro-engraved gourds. Other findings emphasize color display such as an unusual pit structure filled with vegetal remains of a desert shrub, Cinna aphila, densely stained with red ochre. In addition, large amounts of pigments of various colors, sizes, and preparation stages recovered in stratigraphy throughout the occupational sequence potentially indicate the in-situ decoration of many of these items, as well as the preparation of pigments used for rock art production.